from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Jean Alain and family from the Duke, Alberta. This Mass is offered in memory of her husband, Norman, sons, Danny and Roland, daughter, Pauline, and the other deceased members of her family. For special intentions and in thanksgiving for the spiritual and moral support of the daily TV Mass. Our thanks to Jean Aline for making it possible for tens of thousands of faithful across Canada and beyond to begin a new week with this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You gain to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord to Israel, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. Lo, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents, so that I will not come and strike the land with a curse. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Lift up your heads and see your redemption is near at hand. Lift up your see your redemption is near at hand make me know your ways O Lord teach me your paths lead me in your truth and teach me 
for you are the God of my salvation. Lift up your heads and see your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. Lift up your heads and see among us, our King, our Judge. Save us, Lord, our God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zachariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began to, me mo to motion to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. The three biblical figures that appear most often in the liturgy of Advent are Isaiah, John the Baptist, and Mary. In addition to speaking in his own right, Isaiah stands for the whole of the prophetic tradition of Israel, and especially for those prophets who, like himself, contributed to the deepening among the people of a longing for a new and definitive coming of God and of God's kingdom. They spoke of a future day of the Lord, a day sometimes involving judgment and sometimes salvation. Today's reading from Malachi has elements of both. Through the prophet, God announces, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. His message includes, along with words of warning and of condemnation, a call to embrace a way of life that will prepare them to welcome God's coming. The prophet identifies the messenger as Elijah. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children, he says, 
and the hearts of children to their parents. Some passages in the New Testament identify John the Baptist as Elijah. With the spirit and power of Elijah, the angel announces to Zechariah, your son will go before the Lord to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Isaiah, Malachi, and John the Baptist all come to us out of the past. They lived in times and cultures in many ways very different from our own. Their message, however, transcends their own time and speaks to us here and now. It warns, promises, and challenges us. The closer we get to Christmas, the more pressing their message becomes. They all, in their distinctive ways, call us to prepare for the coming of the Christ into our hearts today. The liturgy of the church, like life itself, is integrated into the cycle of the year. Spring, summer, fall, and winter follow one another with a certain inevitability. The cycle is always the same, and yet it is also different. Different above all because we are different. We are a year older. We've had new experiences and faced new challenges. Perhaps we've become married or been widowed, entered the full-time workforce for the first time, or retired from it. Whatever experiences we've had during the past year, today, we are different from what we were at this point in Advent last year. There is a saying in the Old Testament, which comes back a number of times, if today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. To harden one's heart is to render it insensitive to others and their needs, and more profoundly, to make it insensitive to God and to the murmurings of his spirit in our heart and in our conscience. In listening to the readings from the scripture read at Mass, we should think of them as addressed to us at this moment and in this place. When describing the vocation of John, the evangelists apply to him a text from Isaiah. For them, he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The references in the text to valleys, mountains, and hills are obviously metaphorical. The coming of Christ for which we are called to prepare the way is a spiritual coming. It demands a spiritual and moral preparation. In the Our Father, we join two petitions. Each of them throws light on the other. Thy kingdom come, we pray. Thy will be done. It is by doing the will of God, as revealed in the life and teaching of Jesus, that we contribute to the coming of the kingdom. We could even say that, we could even say that the kingdom comes to us in the form of Jesus. He is the kingdom in person. When we welcome him into our life, when we allow his spirit to mold our spirit, and when we try to live as he lived, then the kingdom of God is truly present in our midst. The preface for the Feast of Christ the King describes his kingdom as a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. To embrace these values, to try to live according to them, and to encourage them in others, is to prepare the kingdom of God. Mary is the third great figure in the Advent liturgy. A major focus of the liturgy at Christmas and throughout the Christmas season is on her and on her role as the mother 
of Jesus, the mother of God incarnate. She conceived him in her womb, brought him to birth, and nurtured and nourished him throughout his infancy. She did all this in the words of the second preface for Advent, with love beyond all telling. Twice in Luke's account of the conception, birth, and early childhood of Jesus, he tells us, Mary treasured all these things in her heart. The first occasion was the coming of the shepherds to the manger and their report of the message they received from the angel. The second was the losing and finding of the 12-year-old Jesus in the temple in Jerusalem. In these various events, Mary is presented to us as a model of reflection, prayer, and contemplation. Following her example, we need to be silent from time to time and to enter into ourselves in order to encounter the mysterious presence of God and Christ in us and to experience the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. My Christmas wish for you and for your family is that you will experience the peace, joy, and love which are at the heart of the great mystery we celebrate throughout the coming days. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will draw us more deeply into the mystery of Christmas. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in the daily mass community who have asked to have a family member or a family situation included in our prayer intentions book, that through the intercession of Mary, they might find strength and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. For children who find themselves in abusive situations of one kind or another, that they will receive the help they need. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace and justice throughout the world, and especially in countries currently experiencing the ravages of war and or the turmoil of civil violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> By the mingling of this water and wine, become partakers of his divinity, became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Gracious God, we ask you to make the sacrifice. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. 
It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this spiritual reflection of Father Pedro Arupe. More than ever, I find myself in the hands of God. This is what I've wanted all my life, from my youth. But now, there is a difference. The initiative is entirely with God. It is indeed a profound spiritual experience to know and feel myself so totally in God's hands. Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1 888 383 6277 for details. I am that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God. from